Happy days are here again. The University of Maryland is on top of the world as the 2022 undefeated champions. And there's only one person to lead off this show, and that is the head coach who has moved into like the kind of legendary territory with this season. And that's my good buddy, John Tillman. We got Wayne Viner, Mason Viner here. And John, I'm going to open it up with, uh, wow, just tell us what's happened with you since the victory. I'd like to know what coaches have called you to congratulate you or which Big Ten guys did. And I want to hear all the good (laughs) stuff in a short amount of time. I haven't gone through all my texts yet. You get done with the game. You got the media stuff. So you got to knock that stuff out. And um, then you got to travel back. Um, I actually rode with the team last year on the bus. And um, it's definitely one that I, I kind of felt like I don't need to do that again. I love our guys. But seven and a half, eight hours on the bus with those guys either celebrating or commiserating after a loss last year um it was not the best of environments um so i was going to get a little separation uh so that especially if they won they could celebrate and they didn't have me like you know basically you know in their way of having fun so um you know the bus was kind of their opportunity to hang out and, and laugh and listen to music and goof around so we had some uh, some supervision for uh but Uh, I kind of let them do their thing. So um, didn't get much sleep last night. Didn't feel, uh, just couldn't sleep. Obviously a lot had happened in the last couple of weeks here. Um, I'm sure I'll sleep better tonight. Um, Again, not complaining at all. Um, And then today, very busy, you know, guys, we have to have a meeting to kind of break everything down and kind of figure out uh, when we would do that. Um, You know, guys will start leaving probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, unfortunately that's the tough part of the year is, you know, even when you win, the disappointing part is like the team's not together anymore. Um, and that part you're sad about, even though you're happy you won the last game, but you know, every journey each year is finite and you only get so much time. Um, I feel good about the fact that we've really emphasized, you know, embrace every minute together, um, enjoy every moment, um, you know, just realize like, it's, it's pretty special to do what we get to do. So I know most of us feel that way. It's still sad at the end, knowing that like, we're not going to go out to practice next week. Uh, we don't have any more games. Um, but all the while, you know, you're happy that for the seniors, you know, they left on the highest of notes and they have a few days here to celebrate that with the guys they spent so much time with before they depart. With Viner four gates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner Forgates, for making your company work is our primary mission. Hey, John, John, championships bring happiness, all right? Everybody's happy. Wayne, go ahead. When, when does that as a coach hit you? Because that moment happened late in the fourth quarter. I looked across the field and realized this was the last ride with these guys. Does that happen for you in the game or does it take a little bit? Um, you know, for me personally, it, it starts happening um, midway through the year for me. Um, I just, you know, we have senior day and we do that early. Um, and we do that on purpose um, just because there's always a lot of emotions for your last home game. So we try to do senior day uh, before that to, to kind of buffer it a little bit. Um, but, you know, kind of knowing like, you know, this, there are no more, you know, days with Roman and Logan and Bubba and, and I could go on and on. Um, you know, every, every day towards the end of the year, I just make sure that I'm enjoying being together uh, Cause I know it's, it's gonna like pretty soon, like it's going to be over. So I started kind of putting myself in that position so I can kind of slowly work towards that. And once it's done, it's done. Um, and, and press conference to press conference, I bought into what you said, which is, is next week, the next game. And that got that out of my mind until there were a few minutes left. 
So I, I thank you for that mentality, because even just watching you guys, knowing there was a next week, uh, it really zaps your focus in on that. Yeah, and, and it's like, you know, all of a sudden, and, and it's always like this, and I always give the same, you know, example. You're, it's like going on a train that's going 100 miles an hour, and at some point, the conductor hits the brakes and says, hey, time to get off. And everybody has to get off. And it's a very abrupt ending, you know, whether you win that game or lose that game, you know, guys have internships waiting for them. Um, you know, they haven't seen their family. You know, it's been a lot longer. Um, luckily, our guys usually do a good job of hanging out for a couple of days um, so that they can kind of spend some time together, which uh, I really appreciate. Um, and I'm not surprised, you know, I think so much of the success here has been kind of that pack mentality um, you know, everybody is important. Um, everybody's part of the pack. So the fact that they have some time now, I think is, is, is awesome without school, without practice, they can just hang out and, and you know, kind of enjoy the last moments together. Lacey, go ahead. Coach, when you look at the way you built this team, the transfers played a huge role. And we've seen that across all of sports, just the increased amount of transfers. How did you managed to gel those guys in so well? How did they fit together? And, and how do you look at it as a coach when you bring in guys that only have one year? I think um, you, you got to you gotta find the right guys, um, guys that are aligned philosophically with what you're all about. And you try to talk to them about your core values, what you do, how you do it, so that both sides are well aware of, okay, if I'm getting in this relationship, here are the clear expectations. Um, and are we philosophically aligned? Um, and then you got to have great kids in your locker room that are mature, that are open-minded, um, that, you know, kind of understand like, Hey, here's a guy that could potentially, um, you know, help you. Um, and then obviously you need those guys when they do get here, um, to be unassuming, to be like humble, you know, like John Donville came in and just tried to be one of the guys. He didn't try to run the first huddle. He didn't try to tell guys what to do. He came in, just worked really hard. And after he kind of earned the trust and respect of everybody, um, I think at that point, he was allowed to kind of be more vocal because the guys, they, he earned their respect and their trust. And I think that's important, you know, like come in quietly, like let the guys get to know you. Don't come in like a cowboy to what to do because that would not have gone very well um, but those kids were great kids and we had done our homework so you're never a hundred percent right but you really felt good about those guys coach a uh, couple quick things and you can comment on whatever you want there you know when championship teams come together it takes a lot of events to come in your favor you know the Ivies didn't give Donville another year all right and Maryland had the right graduate program for him uh how about the way alex smith played yesterday it, to me it was unbelievable that he you know probably played the most he's played in a while uh filling in for roman when he had to uh the concussion rumors we were all pray, having breakdowns on on saturday uh, who's going to play who's not going to play and i don't know how much truth there was to that stuff uh as far as we knew about uh Puglisi, but we, you know, we know Bubba got hit in the, in the head and Makar took a cheap shot. Uh, Hopkins not retaining uh, Bobby Benson, how that worked to our favor. There's so many things that had to go right for you to win that title. Don't you feel that way? Um, always does. You need to stay healthy. You need to catch some breaks and you need to overcome some challenges. And, you know, that stuff happens along the way. Um, but man, oh man, to your point, like, you know, the, the road that they gave us, it is what it is, but the road we, we knew it was not going to be easy. I mean, having to play Virginia as the last game on the, that second weekend with a short turnaround and not being able to fly out, we knew like we weren't getting back till one thirty-two, And then when the bus had some problems, I didn't go to bed till that Monday morning till like five. Um, by the time I got to college park, got home and got settled. So 
um, you know, you kind of knew, okay, we can't practice that this hard um, this week just because our guys would be gassed. Um, so you go into the Princeton game and you're like, okay, if we can find a way to win, the best thing that can happen is if we can maybe get a little bit of a lead, but also play, you got to be aggressive. It's who we are, but we also want to be efficient. And I didn't feel like we did a great job of that. We were attacking the goal so relentlessly and, and at times where I just didn't feel like we had a numbers advantage and it really wasn't to our advantage, uh, uh, our, to our benefit. So we had all these turnovers where it went back on defense. So I felt like our defense was a lot more gas than normal. Um, Roman going down, put a lot more pressure on that three man rotation. Um, Jack Corris pulled his hamstring in that game. Um, and then Bubba gets hit in the head. Um, Brett goes down to your point. I was like, okay, this is not the ideal way for the semifinal to go. Um, Say the least. A, you know, so, you know, so it's Saturday night and like, I don't. Well, we might have lost the coach there, but uh, uh, hopefully he will pop back in. It is spectacular, Bruce, that uh, for your birthday present, uh, John Tillman uh, decided to, to talk to us for a bit, and he's back now. All right, John, go ahead. Yeah, I um, I was hearing you guys the whole time. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, Jesse did a great job putting a short stick in Gep's hand. I thought that was super smart. We played. Uh, J Mac a little bit more, who's done a good job for us, Jack McDonald. Um, so we kind of kind of navigated that. But I was nervous with that four hour delay and not much turnaround. Our guys were we looked at the numbers from our strength coach and our numbers. That was the second hardest game in terms of our load, which is kind of a calculation he makes in terms of intensity, distance, change direction, you name it. Um, one was Notre Dame, two was Princeton and three was Cornell. So, um, we weren't sure what was going to happen with Roman. Um, you know, he, to be honest with you, he really couldn't pass and catch yesterday. Um, he could barely kind of play with his left hand. So we were able to use them in defensive shifts, but if they 10 manned us, we, we either had to run them either off or run them to the attack and then maybe run an attackman back, which we did late in the game with Logan. Um, just because that that cast to protect it didn't really give him a lot of flexibility with his hand. Well, there's a couple players, and you've spoke of some of them, but I want to bring up one. If my unsung hero, the guy nobody talks about all season, has been Higgins. He has played some uh, amazingly tough defense. So I want to bring him up. Everybody talked about Luke Weirman as the most improved player, probably from last year or this year. And then the third guy in season – uh, McNaney has has developed into a, a brick wall back there as a goalie. But if you can start uh, with what Higgins added to this team. Yeah, and, you know, the sad part about last year, and, again, you can't control everything, stuff happens, but, boy, when Higgs went down last year, he was playing as well as any short stick, and he and Roman were a great one-two combo, um, and I felt like they were both at a pretty similar level. Um, and then, so when we lost Higgs, we lost a guy that, man, I, if we have him in the postseason last year, I, I just wonder, um, but again, you can't really dwell, can't deal in hypotheticals, but, um, getting him back this year, he wasn't really a hundred percent or at least close to it until about halfway through the season. And we backed him off some things. And I thought our trainer, Anthony did a great job with that. Um, just kind of, Hey, like let's let's lower your load during the week. Um, he came off a serious injury. Um, he was a little dinged up. Uh, watching the first Virginia game, it looked like he was hobbling. Um, we backed him off, and I think that really helped, um, which was great. Um, and then um, I think you talked about Logan. Um, you know, obviously Logan was terrific. Like just uh, in the biggest moments, he seems to play his best lacrosse. Um, and I and I. I think if you asked him uh, that last game last year, probably aided him a little bit, um, you know, kind of feeling like maybe he, he didn't have his best game. So I think that motivated him in the off season uh, to come back and, and try to, you know, really play well if we got back to Connecticut, which he did. And uh, what can you say about Luke? Um, I thought yesterday 
I was so impressed with him because it started well. And then they were really being very flexible with the whistle. So, you know, they were pretty liberal and we felt like they were definitely pushing the envelope on going early. Um, and Luke just kind of had to adjust to it. And I felt like he didn't get frustrated. He basically stayed calm and poised and his ability in the second half just to grind it out. It wasn't always pretty. Um, and even during the game, if Petrakis won it, I thought Luke and, and our wings did a really good job of scrapping and getting that ball back. Yeah, Mace, real quick. Yeah, Coach, kind of a coaching philosophy question for you. You hear a lot of guys talk about establishing a system and having guys stick to that. This year, things were a little bit different for you with Roman and Bubba being such threats on offense with long poles that could score goals constantly. How do you look at that whole picture when it talks to the longevity of guys and, but also maximizing the talent you have now, how did those decisions come down? When did you realize that you were really dealing with 11 guys that could score goals? We kind of morphed in that into 2020. And, and that's the year where we felt like we wanted to do more of that. And a lot of these guys were here. Um, if you go back to 2020, we started off the year against high point And I think we took 60 shots. Um, our 70 shots, excuse me. So that was kind of after 19, we felt like we have the personnel to do that. And we felt like this year we could even ratchet up a notch just with Bubba down there. It just made more sense. Keep them on, keep on offensive middies, um, you know, make people have to defend that, use it as a weapon, especially with four guys. Um, so I think just having a lot of the same pieces from 20, 21 and 22 you just those guys have been in the system so long, you know what they can do. So you have a lot of trust to kind of let them go and transition. Um, and we try to recruit to that now. Um, we try not just to bring in guys that are like solid D-middies. We want guys that can stick handle. We want guys that can push transition um, because it is a great weapon. Um, and now you're getting not only a guy that can help you on one end, but they help you in clearing and then they're helping you attack on the other end. And sometimes that's just somebody that invests a lot of time in their stick work. Listen, I, you know, you go with, you know, let's start with Rambo and the championship and then Connor Kelly and, uh, and then Jared. And now I know you're going to miss Logan was now because he's, he is so humble and so team and so selfless. And we're not going to ask who is going to take over, but who are some of the guys yeah. you're looking to? all right, next year to maybe share that role or take over that role as a leader of the yeah, team? I think, yeah, I think, you know, Brett comes back, and I think that's a big help. Um, Geppert will be back. Josh Kaufman will be back. Um, and Kyle will be back. So they're going to use their COVID years. Um, so those guys I foresee kind of taking over more of a leadership role. Um, and then I think other guys that, you know, we'll need to kind of step up next year. Um, you know, you need Jack Brennan to take more of a vocal role, Jack Corris as well. Um, you know, you want Maliver to do more of that in the offensive. And I think Murph is up to that. You know, now he's been here, but he's also been in college a couple of years. Um, so big voids because of, you know, what Logan's consistently done for so long. Um, but those guys can do a good job with that. They can. Like, those guys can step up. And Brett and, and those three others can really give us a great foundation to work off of. All right, last one. I hear so much about Eric Spanos and uh, Daniel Kelly. You still got a lot of guys in your plate that have two great midfield lines, a great attack, and run that positionless offense that uh, Benson – has really brought to the team. Yeah, and I think those guys, um, you know, Spanos, we redshirted. Whittier, we redshirted. Um, so those guys will technically be freshmen, and they did a great job on the scout team. And to be honest with you, there were times where with some of the injuries, it was like, you know, is there a reason to maybe look at those guys? And we just didn't feel like it was probably the right time. But um, you know, Bobby, Bobby's been great, you know, again, kind of what we're doing offensively started in 2020. Um, and we did a lot of that, um, kind of building up to it. And then when Bobby came in, I think he made just some subtle adjustments to last year, um, because it was so close to the season, but 
with the off season, I feel like now there's more wrinkles uh, that we have. There's more that we're doing. Um, and he had enough time to do those, but also kind of staying true to, we have so many guys back. We added pieces that can play positionless with John and Keegan, um, especially those two guys and Murph. Like there really isn't a, much of a reason to overall everything and, and kind of what we were doing with 2020. Uh, a lot of those aspects were things that we stole from Bobby or Denver, or Penn State and other teams. Um, and we just felt like we maybe didn't have the personnel to play that way in 17 um, Cause that didn't play to Matt and Collins strengths. They were good at other things and very good at those things. But with the guys we had like this more, you know, free flowing position list was better with this group, um, but they couldn't really play the way that Matt and those guys played. So I think good coaches try to adapt to the personnel. I don't ever want to handcuff kids and say like, you got to do X, Y, or Z, or you're not playing. I think our job is to go, this is what you do well let's get you in a position where you can play fast and free um, and attack and be comfortable. Um, and, you know, if we're not doing that, I don't think we're doing the best things for our kids. Coach, last question. Have you, have you number one, removed all the rat poison from the locker room? Is it gone? <laughs> Is it, can we stop talking about this and that and how many 35 and one for Logan and, the numbers are drive you nuts, and I know you're relieved. You might not say you, you felt the pressure or whatever. It was there. And you know what else? It might have kept everybody on their toes. You know what I mean? To, to stay up for every game, even though you didn't talk about it. You can't hide from it. Um, yeah, and we, you know, with the guys, you know, like the, I think the rat poison, I, I went to the locker room today, but I didn't go for very long. So whatever was in there is still in there. Um, you know, I think the guys just threw their bags in there and got out of there as quickly as they could last night because uh, they wanted to get home. Um, it had been since Thursday, so uh, Thursday morning. So I feel like I was gone for six days. So I just got home. So it's so nice to be home. Um, but I, I think for the guys, it was definitely an interesting year. Um, I, I mentioned before, like, we didn't really talk about the undefeated thing um, you know, just because like, if we, if we lost a game, uh, we, listen, we'd be bummed about it, but like, I think we would be more like bummed if, if we lost that game, would that have meant that we didn't win the conference or we didn't win the conference tournament, um, or we wouldn't get into the NCAAs. Like that's where I think the losses would have been more impactful. Um, if we had lost one, maybe to Loyola early. It would have been, hey, let's just keep improving. Let's keep working, whatever it may be. Um, but it was hard with, and I don't, I mentioned it yesterday. I don't search out a lot of stuff, but when you pop on any of the social media, stuff just pops up or you hear stuff or people send you stuff, which I'm not offended by. You're just gathering information. And when you saw some of the information, I was kind of surprised. And I guess I wasn't really looking macro that much. But when people started talking about us and like all time teams, I was kind of surprised. And, and to be honest, with you, this is the truth. When someone said we were 18 and 0 yesterday, I was shocked. I didn't I didn't really think we were 18 and 0. I, I didn't really think how many games we had won. I know we didn't have I know we didn't lose any, but I guess somewhere along the way we were at 12 and, and the, the last month has been such a blur and we just kept looking forward that. I was shocked that we actually got to 18 games. Um, so shame on me for being a little sleep at the wheel. But um, I knew that we had another big game always. I knew that we had lost a game, but I, I hadn't really counted per se. Um, but again, like for our guys, again, just there was never, in my opinion, the pressure of going undefeated. I think there was more of this behind the scenes, man, like we got to get back there. But if we're going to get back there, like, I can't see these kids sad again. I can't see the heartbreak. Um, I can't let that happen again. So there was just, just focus and drive to make sure we could do everything as coaches just to see them happy uh, like they were yesterday, see the fans happy, the families, the alums, uh, the people that care about this program. Um, so it wasn't pretty. Um, it was hard. We were sloppy. We didn't have our A game. I thought Cornell, big reason for that. So tip your hat. Uh, but they found a way 
to not feel that way and get it done. And all credit to the guys with no guarantee it was going to happen. They stared down the dragon, went on the journey and just said, let's go for it um, and risk it, risk like getting their heart broken. But it worked out OK. Hey, Wayne and Mason have really done such unbelievable work with videos. I don't know if you've taken time to ever look at them, but all the parents, everybody, and we're getting views on Maryland lacrosse, Wayne, and not in the hundreds, Bruce, in the thousands. Gentlemen, the reason that people watch is not because they love Wayne or Mason or Bruce. They watch because you got a team that went to nine of the last 11 final fours. And as I've joked with you before, when you write your management book, on how you get these teams to work together and your fundamental understanding of how people relate and how you get the most out of people, that's going to be the best seller. And then that's the day we want to be there. But without, without your team, nobody's watching our videos. And I think we all know that. But the brand, well, is, the brand is growing, Coach. It's well, always yes, it going to grow. And you nailed it. Like that, There's so much to this that is the team dynamic. And in a world of I'm trying to get more likes and views and NLI deals and things of that nature to get to guys for Bubba to play defense, to get Anthony um, and John to run back on defense. I mean, we had Danny Maltz and Logan on defense one time yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. And because the, if not, they would have had a fast break. And those guys are sprinting to the other end and just it's hot. They're tired. But hey, if I can take away a break, then I'm doing it. Um, so getting guys like that, like we could be the best X's and O's guys ever. If you don't have guys that are committed to doing things that maybe they don't want to do or that are better for the team than them, you're only going so far. And, and again, we're lucky to have those kids that buy into it um, because it makes your job easier. If a guy's selfish, I don't care what offense you're running. Like it's not going to run well because – that guy is going to stop the ball at some point to make sure he gets what he wants. Well, yeah. somehow you managed to get that across in a way that few ever, ever do. So there's some magic in there somewhere uh, that, that I, I'd love to know what that is. Maybe one day I'll find out. But, Coach, uh, sometimes Coach. it's, sometimes it's getting the guy, the right guys from the get go. So when you talk to them and you're recruiting them, you talk about it's, it's we over me. And honestly, it filters things a little bit. So the guys that want the records and I want this and I want that, they kind of vary and go, you know, a coach, I, yeah, Maryland's fine, but I, I want to go here. Like you kind of weed some of those guys out. Um, mm -hmm. And so you're not fighting guys to kind of come around and do things the way you want. Like you give them a choice. Hey, if that's what you want, probably not the best place. If you want this, like this is what you're going to get here. Look at Brett Maycar, like talented player, but he didn't automatically change when he got here. He comes from an amazing family. He's made of the right stuff. That's why we wanted him because we knew what he was all about. We knew what we were getting. So when you put him in this locker room, it's really not me doing a lot. It's just getting guys that are, philosophically aligned and guys that are selfless and and when they do that i just look a whole lot smarter but i'm really not that smart i have really good kids that are good at lacrosse and and they're all buying in coach it's all about being the best and you said that yesterday in the press conference you want the best kids in academics in their in their social life in their school life everything and you've done it and we and you've weaved a just a pattern a system that's unbelievable. Carcaterra called Maryland the Alabama of lacrosse. All right. And uh, I think he nailed that. Uh, thank you. Good. Appreciate it. And again, lucky to have the job I have, be in a place where people care so much, which it is unique uh, in the sport of lacrosse. Um, and that motivates you to work hard every day and, and obviously to have great kids and have the support that we have, not only our coaches, our support staff, the administration, like, dream come true for a, a kid from a small town uh, like Logan McNaney to, to be at a place like Maryland. So it's pretty awesome. All right, coach. Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. All right.